In the summer of 1942, this beach near South Sea in Hampshire was sealed off with barbed wire. It was a secret training ground for an elite group of Marines. They were preparing for a truly heroic undercover mission called Operation Frankton. It required peak fitness. They ran, they swam in the open sea, and above all, they became expert at canoeing. It was just canoe, 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 and weather never stopped us. We did it that much that you were used to it. You, you could, we could have turned the canoe around on the sixpence in those days. The men weren't told what lay ahead, an 800-mile seasick journey by submarine from Scotland to Western France. They would launch canoes far off the coast, then paddle 70 miles inland through enemy lines to the port of Bordeaux and blow up as many supply ships as they could. When photographer Quentin Rees came across one of these original canoes, codenamed Cockles, he became so fascinated he wrote a book about them and the extraordinary unit who became the Cockle Shell Heroes. This was their home for five nights. It was an extremely difficult task. They had to paddle so many miles every night and lie up during the day amongst the reeds and the vegetation without really moving at all. The canoes were the ideal way of silently entering enemy waters, enabling the men to plant limpet mines on the ships undetected. What exactly is a limpet mine? I have one here. Six magnets. If you can imagine that was the side of the ship. Stick on the side of the ship, leave it there, kaboom. The young men charged with this impossible task were all volunteers and only just out of their teens. How great was the challenge ahead of them? Enormous. These were ordinary Royal Marines. They were the best that were available. Men who were not anxious to die, just anxious to matter. It was thought that none of them would return alive. The men left the UK on board submarine HMS Tuna on November the 30th, 1942. But in the finest Hollywood tradition, their orders were only revealed when they arrived off the French coast a week later. Their commanding officer was 28-year-old Major Blondie Hassler. He offered that anybody who didn't want to go speak now. I was hoping one of them would, but nobody did. It, it was a suicide mission. An injury had relegated Norman to first reserve. His task was to launch his comrades from the submarine. It was a nice clear night when we launched the canoes and there was, it went to, according to plan with no messing. I said goodbye to the lads and told them that same full of drink and when they get back. Very queer feeling when you see them going away and you know there's not much hope. It was such a difficult task, only two canoes made it to the target. A total of eight mines were planted on the ships, but the damage caused was less than they'd hoped. In truth, there wasn't a great impact. However, it made an awful lot of difference to the French and the British because it was an incredible thing to do. We can't underestimate that now, can we? No. The impact of morale, the fact that people knew they were getting behind the enemy lines and actually attempting these kind of operations. That was just it. We had done the impossible. Of the 10 men who embarked on the mission, only two made it home by escaping through Spain. Two were believed to have died in the water from hypothermia, and the other six were thought to have been executed by the Germans. I suppose I should think thankfully afterwards, but uh, I was disappointed I couldn't go. It had been stupid, wasn't I? But we were all mates together. Uh, and when you've worked with them all the time, it's, it's a, it comes hard. It does. Tomorrow sees the dedication of a memorial to the cockleshell heroes and all those French citizens who helped the survivors escape.